We, we're gonna you're gonna include this couple of notations right there if you see here and and I'll say that okay we have a zero here C zero all zero on the superscript here for weights which means that all your arrows all your arrows coming from zero stage which is input stage very simple to understand here. All these arrows is coming from input layer. Input layer, which is indicated by zero. Okay, this is mostly we're gonna follow throughout my YouTube channels from now on. So please be familiar with those notations here. And again, we have a hidden layers. And we get another uh, superscript, which is one over there. That means this, this weights are coming from first day layer. It's very easy how to how to tell why you use a zero, you use a one as a superscript, and also here we have uh, output layer. Okay, very simple, isn't it? Also, we have to name all the all the weights here, and if you see the uh, weight has a two indices here and one here zero, for example, you know, you know that where your um, weights are originated. Right in this case, your weight is originated from um, input layer. This is how you tell input layer. Okay, and here you're gonna see. A one 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 means that the first one is the the first circle, first neural values where first neural value is placed on previous layer, which is in this case W one is the first circle, first circle, first circle in input layer, input layer, and the second one means that what's the um, no, the the order of circle in next layer which means that you're again the first circle in hidden layer all right so that's why you're gonna you're gonna say one one there one one there so so let's say one one there one one this is easier one one and you're gonna store arrows here okay so let's take a look at then this should be then what one two here one two here one two here i'm gonna change color say this one one two here one two means you're coming from first circle of in, in, in input layer to the second circle to the uh, first layer of hidden layer is that right and and you have a two two and second circle from previous layer and to the um, second layer of the next layer two three and this is very easy to to find out how you're gonna name your subscripts and let's take a look at this one 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 here the, f the first circle from previous layer hidden layer one and you are going as well the first layer layer of the next layer which is upper layer you have only one layer one one circle upper layer so all you have is just, just one there w one one and w here two one and w three one three one means you're coming from third circles of previous layer to the first circle of next layer so three one in the top one superscript indicates that you are uh, these arrows are originating from the the first layer hidden layer something like that okay so let me see if you have a w2 w21 two, two and one so uh, this tells you where your arrow is arrows is originated from and and where your also arrows are coming from the second cycle of previous layer and the first cycle of the next layer it's very 
straightforward but this notation is very important when you have uh, multiple layers and multiple neurons and it's very difficult uh, to keep everything in order okay but by just by just following this notation this conditions is it's going to be very easy all right okay now let us calculate let us calculate a h1 values so of the neural value in first uh, node at a uh, hidden layer and now we know how to calculate this this value is calculated based on adding these two arrows right there okay, let me just go in using a different color say uh, maybe this one orange color here this one right this one and this one right so there you're calculating w1 and this 2 one so h1 is calculated w1 times x1 plus w21 times x2 and you have a zero zero okay okay and let me just erase now and your your second h2 is calculated based on 2 one and this one and and this one right this one is um i can't see right so let me just go and erase this one so one two and two two so one two and two two x1 and x2 and superscript should be zero okay let just erase this again and the last one we can change the color because can't see much here and you have a um, this one zeros one is coming from here and one is coming from here right so this arrows is based on one three and this arrows based on two three see your arrows based on one three and two three so you're all arrows coming from um, arrows indicating one one and uh, two one and one two and two two and one three and two three and and that is a uh, all based on superscript zero because you're coming from the input layer and we don't have all those expression in matrix form and this way this is very easy and and so you don't have the um, bias in these diagrams but we assume they're gonna have bias okay so we have a bias b1 bias b2 bias b3 and that is also zero so zero because um, uh, this bias is related with the zero subscript superscript of the of the weights anyway. But it looks like this is related with the first layer. So this is very confusing. But you know, just notations and try to be consistent. Whatever notation you follow, okay, that's that's the key things. But I'm um, try to follow these notations. And here in this particular example, and you have this bias stuff. So there you have a three. By one H matrix, this must be produced to where in which you have three by two times two by one, which come up with a three by three by one and another three by one by the bias matrix. And if you see over there, we just go in plus minus bias, right? As as you know, we know that the um, bias can be added or bias can be subtracted from or can be added to the um, the output um, and we're, we're going to explain that later in, in, in detail but right now the bias as you know that bias is in inter intercepts and this is input value and this is output value and this is a um, linear relationship which is expressed by y goal and this is out this is in and y which is output out out is equal to w i plus b so b is intercepts b goes and if b is added to a uh, neural network scene goes up increase your uh, linear relationship function value and it decreases if you subtract b from the um neural values like that so the your your um function value here which is linear linear value is increases or decreases depending on how you're gonna do it if you go and subtract from you decrease it if you go and adding to the neural values you increase it. that's why you want to have a plus minus and you're going to explain the meaning of um, b 
So the, what's the meaning meaning of W? Meaning of W is the influence of input on output. That's the meaning. So that if you have a bigger um, weights, then you're gonna have a bigger influence of input at particular um, was particularly associated with this weights on output is big. Otherwise, um, vice versa. And B is a B actually um, it it goes in increase everything and decrease everything so the B actually do not uh, you know influence do not affect the um, influence of input on outputs actually but B tells you and uh, ask you or help you understanding whether your function whether your neural values is is under a normal or is below normal and try to regulate your uh, function value or if you will you can say the regular regularizations based on uh, your uh, bias value or you know in, in general functionally it calls it, it is called the um, biceps in, in linear algebra okay now this relationships this relationships Actually, relationships between imp layer to the um, and the hidden layers. As you see over there. Input layer and hidden layers. Right. In other words, this relationship occurs between here. So what about another relationship occurs that occurs here? So that is relationship between hidden layers, hidden layers and output layers here so output layers and again the output is based on these two errors which is calculated this w11-111 times h1 here and w21 times h2 and top should be 1 because your errors is originated from the first inner layers and another one here third arrows gives you w Three one one times H three, okay, and you have bias in output as well. So I'm gonna say that bias B out. I'm gonna say one here. Follow the notation here, and in, in matrix form, you're gonna see right here. One by three, three by one, and one by one. So that you're gonna end up with one by one output parameters in. One circle in output parameters of output layer. Okay, so now we end up all uh, try to express all the math, uh, expressions. Try to find expressions mathematically for this stage and for this stage, and we're gonna combine them. How we're gonna uh, get um, one big equation to represent and to understand this neural networks. And it's it's very simple. You substitute a this this H here, this H here, in here, isn't it? In here, in here, to get the entire output is expressed based on one big equation here. All right. Okay. Let me just try to mark here, highlight here. This right. This this big equation right. This big equations and I just okay come up here. So this big equations, this big equations tells you tells you what this A and N is doing, right? But the problem is that we don't know we don't know this this um, weight yet. Right, so but we just simply uh, went through how to calculate the weights. So the weights are randomly assigned any numbers, and you may wonder what's going on there. How can you calculate weights when you assign the random number? But this is how the neural networks is is working to get a um, exact weight based on the training process, which consisted of a two. Phases. The first is a forward calculations, as we saw here, and second is a backward calculations. And this, trust me, this works beautifully. Okay, trust me, this works beautifully. Uh, let me see here. So 
So the first forward calculations and and this backward calculations. So you're going to have to repeat this as many times you need one first iterations and second iterations. So each iteration is just called epoch. You probably repeat, you know, 30, 40,000. The mostly I see the 40,000, 30,000, 50,000 is the number that I used to see when I design my uh, structural designs. Things like concrete designs. And this is very uh, rigorously done by computers, then we don't have to really worry about as long as we understand the code correctly based on this correct understanding of of the neural networks in, in uh, mathematically expressed in this way. All right, so um, this is what you learn about ANN's performance. And ANN's performance is expressed based on this very simple mathematics. And these equations are used again by the training process to get correct weight and biases. Once you know the correct weight and biases, you know what happened. What does that mean? That means that now your output, your output is ready to be calculated for any given input. If you see right there, this, this output, okay, this is output. I'm going to, I'm going to change a different color. This is output. This is output is calculated, is ready to be calculated based on any input here, right? This is all you need to know, the input. So you can assign any input. You can assign any input here, any input here to calculate output. So there's your uh, neural, this is how your neural axis is working. Very simple, isn't it? So that you don't, you don't really uh, need to understand any of um, principles and structural mechanics and any, any principle related with the measure as long as you have big data, as long as you have big data. I, I told you, as long as you have big data, as long as long as you have a big data, big data. Of course, big data, big data is generated based on, based on your major, is it? If you are structural engineers and your big data for concrete structure is based on concrete theory, this is what I'm saying, your major. So if you don't have big data, you have to go back and use your knowledge on your major to generate big data. And and what? And and through the training you calculate weights and biases, right? But today we just briefly understand what's going on and we're not sure that we understand uh, all the neural access because this is first just a couple of first time of the um, lecture, so we have plenty of lecture to go. I'm gonna tell you everything gradually um, slowly steadily for you to follow and and create your own neural networks in order to perform the designs of your need and and if you assume that if you have a big data from the beginnings then you don't have to go through these stages perhaps right and from here directly so that you try to get a big data Okay, try to try to download and try to buy or try to borrow once you have big data then you go this you don't have to really understand the theories of your major to generate big data and you can do that because there are so many big data out there you can calculate or generate all the big data because we, we, we can have you can master all the theories to generate big data that's that's honestly right so that if if you have big data just most effort should go to obtaining big data. Once you do that, and with that is why the uh, ANN expert says that your network is working on working on big data, not based working on your principles, your theories, and your you know structural mechanics and you know aerodynamics and fluid dynamics, or whatever. As long as you have big data. This is very convenient me method and let's try it very hard to understand this and try to use them uh, in our measures.